He comes in and he tells me to stand up. I stand up to the wall, still handcuffed, handcuffed to the wall. He puts the nice stick between my legs uh, and have the nice stick between, on the, you know, I guess on the wall. And he placed it and he lifts me up off my feet and he grinds my intestines with that nice stick. Just grinds it and grinds it. Ultimately, um, an assistant state's attorney comes in. The detective, by the way, the person in the white shirt you later found out was John uh, Burge. Was John Burge. Yes. But uh, an assistant state's attorney at, uh, <clears throat> comes in and you are ready to confess. Uh, what finally convinced you to confess? It was, to me, it was like life or death now. You know, they done took all my defenses away. When you handcuff a person behind his back, it's like hog tagging, just hog tying somebody. So when you got me like that and I have no defense mechanisms to t defend myself, so I have to do, I figure if I give them this, you know, and, uh, when I go into trial or I tell the judge, somebody to listen to me, but nobody listened. So the assistant uh, state attorney comes in, takes the, con uh, takes the confession, but it was a detective who was reciting the confession, and yes. you would just say, yes, yes, yes. Um, Which is yeah. Michael Keel. Mm. So um, you wind up going to prison. You, you are convicted, and you, you found other Burge victims, and you formed something called the Death Row 10. What did you all do? All right, so when we was on Death Row, the Death Row 10 was a bunch of guys that had John Burge involved in their case in some fashion or means, and had the same... Um, officers that was involved in their case. So we hooked up with the campaign in the death penalty, and that's what brung all this about. Because at first, you know, we was just um, names without faces. We was monsters until we had to, I guess, have somebody to recreate us and let them see that we're not monsters. And the monsters that, uh, um, that's out there was the police department because they are acti actually 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 um, arrested innocent men, put them on death row. I'm quite sure that some of some innocent person have died already from that. You were released in 2009, and in 2013, you were awarded about $6 million in a civil suit. Uh, if you had a chance to be face-to-face -face with John Burge now, what would you say to him? Um, I would call him a murderer. I would call him a soul snatcher because that's what he has done. He has ruined families, ruined families. And when you lock an innocent man up, that means the guilty man is still, the, the guilty person is still out there roaming around. How do you react to police today? Nervously. You know, I still feel nervous around, if a police pull me over, I still get a little antsy because I don't know their mentality. I don't know. You know, when they ring my name up or what they'll say or what they'll do. What do you want people to take away from your book? I want them to know that this book is about not just an innocent man being placed on death row, but this book is about an innocent man trying to regain his life. You know, this book is for my kids to understand, my grandkids to understand that I fought. I fought my mind, I, I cleared my head, and I put this together with Ty and, 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 uh, and Logan. We were working five years to get this book together. And Your co-author. Yes, and this, this book is going to help, I guess, help me bring some type of closure to a, a great big dark part of my life. Ronald Kitchen, thank you for sharing the story of your life with us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Again, the book is called My Midnight Years, Surviving John Burke. At the opening of the National Museum of African American History, President Obama said in part, quote, a clear-eyed view of history can make us uncomfortable, but it is precisely because of that discomfort that we learn and grow 
and harness our collective power to make this nation more perfect. And God willing, we will prevail, and Chicago will, in fact, be the leading force throughout the United States to change not only the curriculum, but to change the mindset of people, because racism, unfortunately, still does exist today. It definitely allowed our students to speak openly about real life issues. It gave them a sense of understanding and justice and apply it to today's society. How do we find solutions? And this served as a platform to keep them meaningfully engaged in discourse to help make change, not only in school community, but their community at large. So especially with the racial tension that's happening across the United States, this program allows students to have a comfortable forum to discuss and share their ideas intelligently and strategize on how to make a difference in their community. Uh, it is very timely that this kind of curriculum is being rolled out. It talks about what actually happened. It's straightforward, it's factual, it's true. It was created by the Chicago Board of Education to teach our kids what has happened in Chicago's past and to give them an opportunity to understand it and, 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 and be change agents for the future. But most important, this curriculum was developed with the Chicago Police Department. Look, I appreciate y'all for checking out, you know, the Keith Walker and um, John Burgess story, which really we may as well just go ahead and call this the Midnight Cruise story. Um, so I'm not going to keep you long, but I, I, there's just so much about this story that I'm that, that still don't sit well with me. First of all, there are so many people where there were no charges even brought up against them. How about the detectives and the police officers who were actually beating um, these men? I mean, where, where they at? You know what I'm saying? Um, why I been? I mean, why wasn't the problem? prosecutor or the state's attorney ever brought uh any charges brought against them i mean at one point they even talked about indicting um i'm sorry uh yeah inviting De mayor daly into court or what have you and um that never seemed to come through i mean I mean, how do you feel about there being a statute of limitations? First of all, to me, if you do something this heinous, there should be no statute of limitations. Burge got away with a lot of this shit because of the statute of limitations. And I think that's ridiculous. He still have victims.